from Lawrence Academy in Groton, Mass. This is the 2017 NEPSAC Kevin Fleming Bowl on LSP. Today it's the Lawrence Academy Spartans with an undefeated record of 8-0 hosting the Phillips Andover Big Blue with a record of 6-2. Good afternoon everybody, I'm Sam Feely, ready to bring you the play-by-play -play story. LA in its fourth consecutive bowl game, looking to win its third bowl game in that span. They defeated Williston Northampton three years ago, Suffield two years ago, lost to Govs last year. Year. But Paul Zakoskis' squad is 8-0 and heavily favored against Phillips Andover, who eked out a win in their annual rivalry game against Exeter last week, 17-14, and that is likely what got them to this game in the first place, and now they want to capitalize and pull off a big upset on the road. Coin toss is complete. It looks like Phillips Andover has won the toss and will receive. And L.A. will defend the east end zone, going right to left in the navy blue jerseys with the white helmets, pants, and white numbers. And Phillips Sandover in the white helmets, white jerseys, gray pants, and blue numbers. Glad you're with us for what should be an exciting game. NEPSAC Championship on the line. For the big blue. And the ball will be spotted at exactly the 20. And that is where Zach Geddes and the Phillips Sandover offense will begin the game. As I said, quite cool tonight. Uh, today, rather. 40 degrees at game time. Geddes in the shotgun set, one set back, three wide outs to the far side left, one to the near side right. And he takes a shotgun snap, looking over the middle, now looking left, flush from the pocket. Coming to the near side, will throw, and the pass is complete. And trying to wrestle free from the tackle is number 87, Colby Gendron, finally brought down by Spencer Aronson. It's a pickup of five, and it'll be second and five. Same formation as last play. Gettys looking left. Once again, flush from the pocket. Looking down the near sideline, we'll just throw it at the feet of Gendron. LA fans wanted a holding call, weren't gonna get it, and it's third and five. Third and five for the Big Blue as we have a four wide out set, one running back in the backfield for Gettys. That's number 44, senior captain Adam Cohen. Gettys takes a snap, looking left. Now looks to go up the middle, and he is stopped short of the 30 yard line and just barely got across the 25 for a pickup of one. And that'll be fourth and four. For the big blue, and it looks like they're going to have to punt. Juan Muse back deep to receive for the Spartans. And a rugby style kick will go very deep. Muse came up way up to uh, play that ball, and the ball will be down at the 41 yard line of the Spartans. Great starting field possession for the Spartans' first drive of the ball game. NEPSAC Football on LSP is brought to you by Lawrence Academy in Groton, Mass. Considering an independent high school, log on to lawrenceacademy.info for complete information on their programs and be sure to tour their beautiful campus with their new turf field complex. Brady Martin, the sophomore quarterback, highly tattered prospect out of Lemonster, Mass. Sends a man in motion to the far side right. It's Joe Lachetti, and it's a sweep to Lachetti, and he gets across the 45 into Andover territory into the Andover 45. It is a pickup of 14, and another for, and a uh, first first down of the game 
for the Spartans. Lachetti, not really uh, much of a running threat, at least uh, not often, but he picks up 14 on the first play from scrimmage for the Spartans. First and 10, ball is on the 44. It's actually a pickup of 15. 44 of Andover. Hand off up the middle to Muse. Escapes a couple tackles. Gets it to the second level. It's close to another first down. Looks like he has it. Uh, exactly 10 yards to the 34. And yes, it is another first down for the Spartans. So they're just moving the ball very efficiently right now. First and 10 from the Andover 34. Back-to-back -back runs of 14 and 10 to start the drive for the Spartans. Martin takes the shotgun sap, fakes the handoff, looking left, flush to his right. Fires complete. And out of bounds is Aronson, close to another first down. And he did, in fact, get it. Three plays, three first downs for the Spartans. They are coming out with a purpose to begin the their first drive of the ball game. It's a pickup of... 11 to the 23. Pitch to Muse, left side. 20 and out of bounds inside the 20. So finally Andover prevents the Spartans from getting a first down, but it was a decent chunk of yardage. Five yards in fact to the 18 where it'll be second and five. Touchdown, Spartans! 18 yards. Muse had carries of 10, 5, and 18 on that drive. They went 59 yards in just five plays. And 33 yards coming on rushes by Juan Muse. And now A.J. Mastrangelo for the extra point. Muse is a freshman, mind you. And the kick is just inside the upright and good. And with 9.27 to go in the first quarter, Lawrence Academy 7, Phillips and over nothing. This is the Nepsack Kevin Fleming Bowl on LSP. Advertising opportunities are available on LSP. Get your company's message on air or on localsportsproductions.com for as little as $25 an ad. Visit localsportsproductions.com slash advertising or email sam at localsportsproductions.com for more information. Mr. Angelo to kick it deep, back deep to receive are Andrew Antonucci and Jacob Jordan. Three plays, six yards on the first drive for Andover, and five plays, 59, and a touchdown on the first drive for the Spartans. Mastrangelo boots it deep. And it looks like it's going to be Jordan. Jordan from the two, coming to the near side. Across the 15, uh, gets to the 15 before he's wrapped up on the special teams tackle by Peter Bryant, one of the captains. He's a junior captain from Ayer Mass, 6'2", 230. I mentioned uh, Andover just squeaked into this bowl game after a three-point victory over our tribal Exeter last week. But you know they're not just happy to be here. They want to pull off a huge upset on the road. But right now they're down seven with not even three minutes gone by in the first quarter. Here's Geddes in the shotgun. Two wideouts to either side. Takes a snap. Looks left. Fires. And it is dropped nearly a one-handed catch by Michael McCollum but instead it's second and ten second and ten ball is on the 16 of the big blue again two wideouts to either side 
one running back. It's the senior captain, Adam Cohen. And the snap is bobbled by Geddes, picks it up, running, looking to throw, and he just spikes it at the feet of the nearest receiver, who happened to be McCollum, and it'll be third and ten. Lucky not to have lost yardage there or turned the ball over, or worse yet, or the big blue. Geddes is one of four for five yards to begin the ball game. Two wideouts once again to either side. Cohen the, Cohen the lone setback, Geddes in the shotgun. He's gonna run it up the middle. Now cut to his left. Escapes a couple of tackles, but will be forced out of bounds by Thomas Greeny. And it will not be nearly enough for a first down. And once again, a three and out for the Spartans. Sorry for the connection delays as we have a fake punt executed. Uh, no, well, it looked like a fake punt, but it's another rugby-style punt that's going to be let go by Aronson and downed at the 34 of the Spartans. Sorry for the connection issues, folks. But we're back on. Didn't miss much. Want LSP to taper broadcast your team's games? Rates start just $100 per game. Also ask about having LSP uh, stream your next gaming tournament, concert, recital, school play, or other event. Visit localsportsproductions.com slash services or email sam at localsportsproductions.com for more information. Martin to his right, and what a catch! Nearly dropping it was Justin Barron, but he gets enough for a first down. The opposite of the result for McCollum on that one pass play. Pickup of 12 to the 46 where it'll be first and 10. Two of two for 23 yards is Brady Martin. And Aronson will be brought down in the backfield. Big stop on the play by the Big Blue. They needed that Owen Dignan leading the charge there for the Andover offensive line. It's a loss of five and a uh, loss of five. It'll be second and 15. Martin won't escape the second effort. And the Spartans fans wanted a face mask called on Norris Beattie, the senior captain, who stands 6'8", 340. And now there is a late flag. And it is, in fact, a personal foul face mask against Beattie. So that wipes out the five yard, the six-yard loss that would have made it third and 21. And that'll be an automatic first down as well. It's kind of a delayed penalty, but it was definitely an obvious one on Beatty. So here we go, first and 10 into Andover territory at the 44. Andover bails out the Spartans there. Hand off to Muse. Cuts it to his left, then back up the middle and gains a good chunk of yards to about the 40, uh, the 37 of the big blue. It's a pickup of seven. Make it second and three. Muse has four carries for 40 yards already. Second and three. Hand off. And Josh Aruda gets a first down for the Spartans.
Pickup is to the 27 yard line. It's a pickup of 10 for Aruda. Paul Zakaskis getting everybody involved in the offense in the early going. Hand off to Aruda to the left side. And gets across the 20 close to the 15. Ball be spotted on the 17 yard line and it's a pickup of a 10, exactly 10 for a first down. So Aruna back to back first down rushes. Hand off to Muse, cuts it left, try to get the corner, touchdown Spartans. Muse's second touchdown of the first quarter and it's 13 nothing. I don't know if Leon Modesti wants to call a timeout here, but this is getting ugly early. 13 0. Possibly 14 0 if Mastrangelo can make this kick. We're not even halfway through the first quarter. Then again, LA is heavily favored in this game for a reason. They're 8 0 for a reason. Mastrangelo's extra point is good. And with 6.24 to go in the first quarter, it is Lawrence Academy 14, Phillips Andover uh, nothing. This is the Nepsack Kevin Fleming Bowl on LSP. This clock is set to 20 minutes. And the opening tap is under control of the Bulldogs leaning in off the glass. No good. Rebound tapped around and collected by Mass Bay's Adrian Lopez. Into the corner, a three is front iron, no good by Colin Myers. Rebound controlled by the Buccaneers. This three is in and out by Lopez, and the rebound to Damon Kerrigan. Defense! 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 Thinking about a three was James Lesme. Lesme again in the corner, gets it out to Santiago Lopez. Lesme a three, got it. 3-0 for our first score of the game. Shaman Davis. Drive, ball poked away, and unable to keep possession is Colin Mars, but and they're gonna give possession to the Bulldogs. Far side official initially said it was uh, Mass Bay ball, but they ruled it went off Myers, which is what should have been the correct call, and it is. So here's Christian Santiago Lopez over to Jamari Coakley. Back to Santiago Lopez. Coakley over to the opposite side for a three by Lesme. Front iron, no good, and the rebound by Adrian Lopez. Lopez ahead into the corner for a three by Myers. No good, rebound taken away by Coakley, a second rebound of the early going. Santiago Lopez meets a double team. Gets around it to Lesme. Lesme back out to Santiago Lopez. Three ball by Lesme is good. That's the second three of the half. And it's six nothing. Lopez goes down low, they kick it out to Myers for three, no good. Mass Bay can't buy a bucket, rebound tapped around, good hustle, Kerrigan has it. And <laughs> Kerrigan just tried to posterize Myers, unsuccessfully so. Bucket is still in possession, down low to Kerrigan, can't draw a foul, but he does get two. Eight nothing in favor of Bunker Hill, and this is why they're seven and two leading Region 21. Leaner over the rim, no good by Myers, kicks it out. Shot did not hit the rim, so only eight seconds to shoot, and the steal by Christian Santiago Lopez has his shot rejected out of nowhere. Back the other way come the Buccaneers, the leaner, and finally the layup for Didi Mathalier. And the Buccaneers are finally on the board. It's eight to two. Defense! 
Left wing three is front iron, no good. Lesme has been trying to rack those up big time, unsuccessfully so. Davis with the rebound for Mass Bay. Over to Lopez. Davis, Myers into the corner, a three by Lopez. Front iron, no good. And Kerrigan there for the rebound. Quickly up ahead to Santiago Lopez. If he can't save it from going out of bounds, it'll be Mass Bay ball. And we'll have our first substitution of the game as Troy Appleberry checks in for Mass Bay, replacing Adrian Lopez. The FCC is dangerously close to repealing net neutrality. Like virtually all small businesses in America, LSP needs net neutrality to pro provide you, the viewers, its customers, and clients the best possible product without interference or throttling from telecom companies. The flow of ideas and future of innovation in America and potentially around the world depend on preserving net neutrality. Visit www.gofccyourself. Dot com now to submit a comment to the FCC and be sure to call and email your senators and congress people to urge them to take action as Myers picks up the layup. 8-4. Spot up three, back iron no good, but a foul after the shot. And Jamari Coakley is going to go to the line for three as incredulous at the call is Troy Appleberry. The first free throw is good by Coakley and it's 9-2, uh, 9-4 rather. Not 89-4, my bad. Second free throw is good. Fifteen fifty to go in the first half. Three for three at the line is Coakley, and it's 11-4. Davis trying to go down low. His pass is deflected, saved, however, by Didi. Takes a shot on the layup, blocked by Kerrigan, and back the other way come the Bulldogs. And that's going to be an offensive foul on Ramsey, on uh, Jamari Coakley as setting his feet there. I believe that was uh, Didi actually, who just got stuffed. Davis. Spot up three by Appleberry, no good. Gets his own rebound, got, gets away with a travel. Swatted by Kerrigan, long two, no good. Rebound, Appleberry can't get it to go. He's swatted by Kerrigan again into the corner. Myers for three. Myers has five and it's 11-7. Nearly a backcourt violation, keeping his toes inside the half court is Coakley. Coakley at the top of the circle, over to Lesme, another three, that's good. He's got nine and it's 14 to seven. The Bulldogs doubling up in the early going. Myers for three. Kerrigan with the rebound. Kerrigan's got four rebounds, three blocks, and two points right now. They go down low. It's swatted away from behind by Sebastian Denis, and it goes out of bounds. <laughs> to the Buccaneers as we'll have a substitution. And into the game for the first time is George Cervanos for Mass Bay. 14-7, 14.09 to go in the first half. Shimon Davis over to Myers into the corner. Back out to Davis. Swing it around to Sarvanos. Davis, deep three. Side iron, no good. And this is out of bounds. This will, they're gonna look. The two officials are gonna confirm. They say it's 
Bunker Hell Ball. Advertising opportunities are available on LSP. Get your company's message on air or on localsportsproductions.com for as little as $25 per ad. Visit localsportsproductions.com slash advertising or email sam at localsportsproductions.com for more information. Nearly a travel there by Santiago Lopez into the corner. Coakley drives the lane, puts up the one-hander, no good. Rebound tapped around and eventually controlled by Appleberry. In the corner, Myers, yes. Myers second three of the game and we got a good one, 14-10. And a traveling violation on the Bulldogs. Sorry for the delay in the stream, folks. Uh, see if we can get that fixed. Saravanos. C.J. McIntosh is in the game for the first time. Pass tipped and stolen by Kerrigan. Gets an outlet pass to Santiago Lopez. No good. Kerrigan can't get the rebound. Instead, it's Mathalier. 14-10, 12.45 to go in the first half. McIntosh. Saravano strives, nearly has it poked away from behind. Myers, another three. So we got three players this game, each with three threes already in the first eight minutes. One point game as Mass Bay trails 14-13. Myers has 11, and this is stolen. Saravano forces the tip. McIntosh for the lead. Fifteen, fourteen. Mass pays its first lead. Kerrigan over everybody, no good, and that's punched out of bounds on the rebound attempt by Dane Allen. And we're gonna have a timeout called by Mass Bay as their lead is no more, and uh, by Bunker Hill rather, as Bunker Hill's lead is no more, and Mass Bay has a fifteen, fourteen lead. So the last time, as I was saying, the Blue Sox hit two home runs in a postseason game. You have to go back to the clinching game of the 2013 championship series. In, on August 25th, 2013, Josh Klimkowitz and Dave Ahern. And we also have uh, the we also have a ICL first, as far as we know, the first time both number nine hitters have homered in a postseason game. So that's strike one to Dan Graham. Speaking of number nine hitters, but he wears number nine. Dan Graham with a home run tonight and two walks. He takes strike two. And. Uh, I want to wish a, uh, uh, probably not watching this game, but wouldn't hurt to wish a happy 78th birthday to one Carl Yastrzemski. On the 50th anniversary of the Impossible Dream. That's down low. Two and two. Graham, Alvarez, and Rojas do up here in the top of the seventh. Big gap in left center for Graham. And he will take ball three. Wow, is that right? Yes. How do you win a How do you win a batting title with only a 301 average? The, the mound's higher. Yeah, I, I I guess, but like, but like, yeah. F 
Full count pitch. Driven deep to right center. Back goes Tallis to the wall. It is gone. The second home run of the game for Dan Graham. The home runs coming in bunches for the Blue Sox this series. Six to one. The left fielder, number 24, Julian Alvarez. And here comes Julian Alvarez hoping to get on that train. So how about that? Two home runs, three RBIs, and two walks for Dan Graham. On the outside corner for strike one. Well, that'll pump the OPS up considerably. He's got an OPS of 5,000 tonight. This is down the left field line, fielded by the third baseman, Hayes. And he fires on to first, one down. The first baseman, number five, Dorian Rojas. Like, how many times are you going to have, like, uh, are you going to have, like, multiple at-bats in a game and have an OPS of 5,000 for that game? It's, it's incredible. Yeah. Here's Dorian, and he turns away from ball one. And that's the Blue Sox' first ever three home run game in the postseason, at least since 2006. In the, I'll just, as this is skied into center field, back goes Hartwell to the wall, and that one is gone! Are you kidding me? Well, how about the first four home run game in postseason history in the point streak era for the Blue Sox? Seven to one. I mean, Morris is at 116 pitches. Morris is at 116 pitches, and it doesn't look like there's any... Okay, now the, is there anyone warming for the Bulldogs? So Jake Wilsey is going to grab a bat and hit for Justin Silvestro. For Justin Silvestro, number 27, Jake Wilsey. Jake Wilsey, another color commentator of mine, the Tulane product. And he takes ball one. Yeah. Morse had 117 pitches. You know he's at the end of his rope. So that is now our first Mm-hmm. In swing and a miss, strike one, one and one. This also marks the first time in the point street in the uh, 400 hitter era, not the point streak era, the 400 hitter era, that the Blue Sox have hit four home runs in a game, regular season or postseason. Wilsey comes up empty, and it's one and two. And that hits him in the small of the back. And Wilsey will go to first. And Wilsey actually missed some time this season because he injured his back lifting weights. And so that could be a uh, cause for concern if you're the Blue Sox. And now here comes John Halsey. And I think this is going to be it now for Colby Morris. And not a moment too soon. A tough night for Colby Morris. He kept the Bulldogs in it as long as he could, but the go for ball was just too much. And he exits, still responsible for Wilsey on first. We have a pitching change coming to you from Morelli Field at Melrose High School in Melrose, Mass. Blue Sox 7, Bulldogs 1. This is Blue Sox Baseball on LSP. Advertising opportunities are available on LSP. Get your company's message on air or on localsportsproductions.com for as little as $25 per ad. Visit localsportsproductions.com slash advertising or email sam at localsportsproductions.com for more information. So here is Thomas Russo to face J.P. Songin, who misses down and away ball one. Songin is listed as a right-hander on the Bulldogs roster. 
As that drops in there for strike one. Songan, a very soft tosser. One and one the count. Swing and a miss. One and two. Russo 0 for 2 with a walk tonight. And there's a balk that's been committed here by Songin, so Wilsey will advance to second. And Russo grounds this one down the first baseline. Foul remains 1 and 2. So 120 pitches in 6 and a third for Colby Morris allows 10 hits, 7 runs, 5 of which are earned, walks 3, and strikes out 3. This is fouled off. He allowed 3 home runs to the last 4 batters he faced, and you know that's, that's definitely a sign that a batter is tired when he's grooving them like that. Songen got the start in right field last night, and this is driven deep to right. Back goes Talis, and it's off the base. It's off the base of the wall. Around third is Wilsey, and it's an RBI double for Thomas Russo, and it's eight to one. That had a chance to get out as well. They'll bring up Josue Feliciano. I know he loves to bunt, but not really a bunting si situation here. The center fielder, number 21, Josue Feliciano. Sway is one for three with a double and a run scored. And he takes upstairs ball one. I don't know if these are even Tim Wakefield velocity fastballs. And that catches the outside corner, one and one. But you never want to throw a high change up in any situation. Two and one. This is grounded down the third baseline, fielded by Hayes. Throw to first. In time, two down. You know, I was saying earlier, you know, when it was 4-1 and the Bulldogs were getting the tying run into the on-deck circle a couple of times, you know, I was saying these are the games that uh, the Blue Sox need to win in order to, uh, you know, the, quote, playoff caliber wins, unquote. And yet, here they are with four home runs tonight, and they're up 8-1. to one. Two and zero the count. Strike one, two and one to Chris Ruaco. Three for three with a double and a solo home run. He comes up empty there. Two and two. And this is what we go. This goes back to. Uh, the game against Soren Hansen in the semifinals. When you have a soft tosser, you got to be able to time your swing better against a because uh, I can take off on you. Full count, the payoff pitch, and this is into left center field. Back goes Clifford to the wall, and he reaches up and makes the catch for the out that retires the side. The Blue Sox score three more runs, including two solo shots. We go to the bottom of the seventh, closing time for the Blue Sox. Blue Sox eight, Bulldogs one. This is Blue Sox baseball on LSP. Want LSP to taper broadcast your team's games? Rate start just... Face off in the right wing circle. And the Spartans win it. Moynihan up the near side boards. They redirect it out of the zone to Sweeney. Sweeney has it poked away. Puck poked away again there from the Lions off the near side boards. Get out of the zone. 
And back and forth here in the neutral zone, and this is out of play into the LA bench with 12.31 to go. Face off in the neutral zone on the far side outside the St. Mark's zone. Face off will be won by the Spartans. Reversing direction there is O Black. Out to the red line. Backhanded in in the air and a nice dodge of the hit there by Riggins. He misses wide, however. Backhanded in from the blue line. In deep for Miller. Miller goes around the end boards to Riggins. Riggins absorbs contact. Riggins trying to get an angle and a save by McKennett. <laughs> Things are getting dicey for both goalies. Neither of them have cracked thus far in the second period. Still 1-0 our score. The first period goal by Tyler Young holding up as we approach the halfway point of the game. Face off, one to Shea. Shea wraps around, goes out to the left point. One time from a knee off a couple of bodies. Kept alive. And this is, wow. That puck wasn't covered by McKenna. That was a very early whistle blown. The puck was loose, it got past him. And the uh, official behind the goal thought he had it. So, I'll have to reset the offense. Face off in the left wing circle. And this is, one by the Lions, comes around the end point, around the end boards rather, into the LA zone, back to plate is Doyle, Doyle gets it to Bravaro, rubs off Nugent. There's Colangelo, Colangelo back to Shea, and he can't get that shot on target. Now another chance, Shea, backhands, saved by McKennett. Back the other way come the Lions. On the far side, the shot off a stick. That was off of Doyle's stick and into the protective netting as it comes right back into the mitt of Bavaro with 11.04 to go. Face off in the right wing circle. It will be Bastion against Kutu. Kutu wins the face off. The shot. That's a save by Grace. Big hit along the near side boards, colliding. Warm Moynihan or the Spartans. Now a chance in the slot to the right wing circle off of McKennett to the end boards. Another collision along the end boards, trying to get it out of the zone or the lines. Now here they come in a two on two. Defense coming back. The shot. Well, a tire there, number three for. St. Marks will get a name on him in a second. Now the shot. And blocker saved there on the attempt of the slot by Bastian by McKennett with 10.20 to go. Nepsack Boys Hockey on LSP is brought to you by Lawrence Academy in Groton, Mass. Considering an independent high school, log on to lawrenceacademy.info for complete information on their programs and be sure to tour their beautiful campus with their new turf field complex. Face off in the right wing circle, won by the Lions. There's Moore carrying it around the end boards, up the far side boards. I'm surprised they didn't get uh, called out of play given the uh, Spartans were leaning over the bench there. Comes back to the red line in Gilo. Gilo over to Connor. Connor up the far side board, shipped in from the red line. Comes back out to the neutral zone and offside is Connor. 9.53 to go. Both teams have had their chances this period, but LA has not solved McKennett this period, anyways. And St. Mark's has not solved Grafe. Top line back out there. 
for LA, both offense and defense with Shea, Fontaine, and Colangelo. And Doyle and Bavaro at the D points. Faceoff comes back to the LA zone. Over to Doyle. Doyle loses the handle but gets it back, nearly colliding with Bavaro and also with Cicerello. Cicerello nearly had a turnover. Doyle tries to connect with Shea on the left post, but it goes wide. Comes out of the zone, battling for it. Good job to lift the stick of Kutu there. And now Doyle. Doyle up the left wing boards to Shea. Now Fontaine with a little bit of space. Walks in. Puts on the brakes. Goes to Shea. Backhands. Loose puck. They score! Colangelo cleans up the mess. And it's 2-0 Spartans. Lions looking to answer, that shot rifles wide, losing his stick is Bastian trying to play defense there. Cameron, and Bastian, his stick snapped in half. Still some driftwood in the LA zone. Now shot from outside the blue line and gloving that down is McKennett. Moynihan putting another shot on goal from distance. On McKennett, he's mad to make a couple of those saves. So there goes the firewood. Right wing circle face off. Miller to take it for LA. And he wins it back, but nobody was waiting for it in the slot for the Spartans. And another puck comes tumbling in on McKennett. And he'll have to cover up with 8.34 to go. Spartans with a 2-0 lead. Young with the power play goal at 10.13 of the first. And just now, Sam Colangelo cleaning up the litter in front of the net, beating McKinnett to make it 2-0. Lions have their work cut out for him now. Graf is playing a phenomenal game. It's not just him, it's just the, it's the entire defense of the Spartans. Here's Bastian, goes into the slot, but the pass broke up. Bastian with another attempt! And McKenna covers up again. The Lions could easily be down 5 nothing right now were it not for the play of McKennett. He's had to make some fantastic saves. Uh, shot from off the faceoff wide left around the end boards. Lions looking to carry out of the zone. Walking in the near side, the shot. Kick saved by Grafe on the attempt by the captain, Boylan. Comes all the way back to the St. Mark's zone. Ray grouping is Moore. Moore under duress there from the goal scorer. Colangelo to whistle. And we have a cross-checking penalty coming up. And I believe it's on the Spartans. And that is Matt Connor. Penalty comes at 10.27 in the second. First power play of the game for St. Mark's. And they win the faceoff, but unable to handle the puck is more. It hops off his stick, and they have to come all the way back. And that'll kill a few seconds off the power play. Now further pressure here from Sweeney. Now entering the zone is Cicerello. Cicerello wraps around, gets poked 
away from from behind by Bavaro, but he keeps possession. Good pressure there by Sweeney. Around the end boards back to Cicerello. Cicerello tries to reverse direction under duress, and that's cleared 200 feet by Sweeney. LA will go for a partial change. Bavaro stays on. Off the side boards, 110 left on the penalty. The left point, over to Hartman, loose puck! And blow the whistle on that one. Another save made by Grafe, out to the right point. Now to the right wing, Moore. Moore takes the shot, ripped out of the air by Grafe with 6.21 to go. You can follow LSP on the web at localsportsproductions.com, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and Patreon, LSP37, Snapchat, LSP Media, and subscribe to the LSP YouTube channel. Face off in the right wing circle. It'll be control, no! Oh, backhanded out of the zone by the Lions' Nick Carlson. Or was that Connor Barry? I'm not sure. About 30 seconds left on the penalty. Couple of shots on goal, but there hasn't been a whole lot of zone time here for St. Mark's. It's be rifled up the near side boards by Colangelo. Waiting for it, there's more of St. Mark's. Tries to hit the home run pass. Good pressure here from Cameron. Cameron hits his man, gets it just out of the zone. Six seconds left on the penalty, and maybe a chance for Shea for a shorty. Gets forced below the goal line by Doyle. Now a chance from the top of the slot, loose puck, and it comes to the far side. So right off the penalty kill, LA applying offensive pressure, and there is Shea, the first teamer. And it's 3 nothing. So it uh, must be nice to come back to your old stomping grounds and uh, see the Blue Sox once again uh, doing what they do. Yeah, I mean, uh, when I was a bat boy back in 98, I mean, not much has changed. Rick's teams have always been dominant in this league, and <laughs> like I said, not much has changed. Here yep. we are. 1-0 oh, the count to Jeff Costello. He's the ninth man to bat in the inning. Costello 0 for 2 with two walks. Up and away, 2 and 0. So, um, you know, we, we talked to Mike Hart uh, the other night about uh, how he managed to get get his uh, gig playing uh, semi-pro ball in Canada. Uh, tell us about uh, how you uh, how you got signed by uh, your team in Italy. Um, well. After Lexington, I went to uh, Worcester Academy Prep School for a year. Mm -hmm. Put on about, f you know, 20, 15 pounds of muscle. Mm -hmm. uh, luckily, I was awarded with a full ride to UNH for basketball. Mm -hmm. Started my freshman year. Started Down the third baseline, fair ball being waved around third is Russo. Holding it second is Feliciano and an RBI single for Costello. And it's 9-1, to one, but go ahead. Um, started all four years and then... You know, I mean, I didn't really plan on playing professional basketball, but when I, once I got done, they said, hey, you know, you're good enough, you can play. I was in the uh, NBA draft in 2011. Obviously, was not drafted. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, my agent found a team in Italy, and uh, that was six years ago. So Ain't been there ever since? Uh, I played in Israel for a year, mm -hmm. tore my ACL that season, Ooh. so I never went back. Mm -hmm. Um but it's yeah, it's been a fun ride. I, you know, it's a miracle that people still pay me to exercise. It's, uh, you know. uh, wouldn't we all love that privilege? Looks like we're going to have another pitching change for the Royals, and I think it's uh, more than just a straight pitcher change. It's, looks like we've got some other positions being shuffled around. As Adam Johnson, who is the uh, second baseman, is now on the mound, and you know, this is, uh, I'm sure there's a tough way for Somerville season to end. You know, they were they were hanging in there competitively for so long, and like Blue Sox were try, you know, left nine men at uh, on base up to this uh, up to this point, and uh, you know, for for them to break out here with uh, with uh, five runs in the uh, 
bottom of the sixth and looking for more. Uh, you know, this is this must feel really good for the Blue Sox and also for you as a fan and a Blue Sox alumnus. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, I don't have all the rings. I wasn't there for all the years to be the bat boy, but uh, just to be here is a special thing. You know, Rick is a very dear friend to my family, and um, he's almost a godfather to me. And, mm -hmm. uh, to, you know, I like to be here and show my support. Ross Corelli, obviously, was on my basketball team. Yep. High school. I, uh, I... Uh, th actually, th there's this one moment that that I'm reminded of now. That I oh yeah, you guys played together. Um, it was in now, now, yeah, you played Lexington four years, then did a post grad at Worcester. That's yeah. right. Okay, so it was in the 2006 yep. sectional tournament. I believe it was the game against East Boston. This is the one where Ross gets like knocked out silly. I remember. Get, gets bloodied up and then comes back. Yep. Can, 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 can you walk us through uh can you walk us through 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 that that game and like, like like the reaction the crowd gave. I remember Matt Reynolds reaction when uh uh on on the commentary cuz I was working in the truck that evening. But to, to I I equate this moment to when Paul Pierce came back after uh, at, in the finals. Yes. Ross Curley is a tough gritty guy who mm -hmm. works hard, does not know pain. Mm -hmm. and is just willing to sacrifice his body for the greater good of the team. And you're totally not saying this because he's 20 feet to your left right now. He's a guy. <laughs> he's a glue guy. He's mm -hmm. a guy you want. He's a guy I want next to me in battle. So, you know, I wasn't surprised by that situation, but I was definitely proud. So, yeah. he's a guy that uh, will always be by our side no matter yeah. what's going on. I uh, just heard that Redding has now cut it to 7-5 against Andre. It's, uh, well, you know, like I said, Andre was up 7 nothing, and uh, Redding clawing it back 5 unanswered. But uh, he going to be uh, he gonna be around as this is into center field, down for a base hit. And being waved around third is Feliciano. He will score 10-1. And it looks like Sal Freelich is going to pinch hit for Ross Curley. As... So yeah, no, I leave on Friday for Italy. Actually. Oh darn! So, this is my my final days here. I'm well, I, well, I hope well, I hope you'll at least tune in to uh, uh, to, to watch the uh, to watch the. Um, of course, you'll, the, have an, you'll definitely have an audience uh, all the way overseas. Oh yeah, I, and and to think the uh, the as is popped up by Sal Sal Freelich. as Gomez comes in towards the mound, <laughs> does not make the play. Rough night for. Somerville. But yeah, um, obviously with the time difference, it'll be uh, be two in the morning, I think, by the time uh, by the mm. time the game is uh, is on the air uh, in Italy. I, I try to hit the sheets by about four a.m., so I should <laughs> catch a good, significant chunk of that game. Okay. Well, uh, well, well we'd love to. Have, well, you know, uh, drop a, drop us a comment in the uh, drop us a comment in the uh, in the stream when uh, when it's oh, live. Of course, we'll, of course. Let us know you're yeah. tuning in. Connor Green takes strike one. Uh, he actually didn't drop that. It, it fell away from him, but... Uh, oh, oh, yeah, okay, so that is an error. Base is loaded. Connor fouls this one off, and it's 0-2. I almost parked right there. That would have been bad. <laughs> yeah, I... Like, I... I um, there's a... Uh, there's a very specific place I park my car every game that I know is out of reach of the foul balls. The walk is always worth it. Oh, yeah. Well, actually, it's not even that far away. It's just over the past the crosswalk. That's up the middle through for a base hit. Being held at third is What's the uh, Vigers. And now uh, Castell scores. The uh, and there is no mercy rule in the ICL. No skunks? We, we should know because uh, we beat these guys 17-1 to 1 earlier this season. Yeah. I better be careful. You know, this keeps going. Rick might put me in. He's been talking about it for years now. <laughs> Here's Jake Wilsey, our, my former color commentator. That is on the outside corner for strike one. Wilsey walked in his only plate appearance last night. That was the uh, that swung on miss for strike two. Uh, that was the that was the plate appearance where I thought that that uh, tough strike call 
on him with strike three, and then I thought Dorian had walked, and then uh, turns out it was it was Jake who walked the whole time, and then Dorian was then up. So, zero oh, and two the count to Jake. The pitch popped up, foul over the. You gonna screen. get this in? Uh, no, thank you. You can reach that. No, I can't. I'm not stretch arms wrong. That's in the bullpen. <laughs> Remains zero and two. I had faith. I thought you were going for that one. <laughs> you have more faith in me than I do, man. <laughs> Uh, I mean, the closest I think I've uh, – there was, like, one game I think I've ever worked here where a foul ball came so close to hitting oh, me as wow. this is smoked into center field, but this will hang up long enough for Valdaria to make the catch. The side is retired. The damage has been done. The Blue Sox three outs away from advancing to the ICL Championship Series. Blue Sox 11, Royals 1. This is Blue Sox baseball on LSP. Oh, yeah. Be sure to mute your uh, microphone, man. Uh, just press the button on it. Yep. Okay, there you go. Is it blinking? Yeah, okay, it's Perfect. it's muted. Sweet. All right. Uh, Thank you. Yeah, no problem. Thanks a lot, Dane, for joining me. Always a pleasure. Yep.